Good afternoon, brothers and sisters in Christ. I just plead the blood of Jesus over this video and all who's watching. I pray you are blessed. I want to talk a little bit about the Lord and um, kind of an epiphany that my son had. Um, I love how the Lord leads and prompts and um, how he confirms things um, through many avenues uh, the Holy Spirit will confirm things. I know that I've had things confirmed on my channel through a lot of you, so I truly appreciate that and I thank you for that. That's why we're supposed to be one body in Christ. But I want to talk about um, uh, John 2, verse 13 to 16. And if you remember um, when Jesus... Uh, was cleansing the temple. We'll start here at verse 13. Now the Passover of the Jews was at hand and Jesus went up to Jerusalem and he found in the temple those who sold oxen and sheep and doves and the money changers doing business. When he had made a whip of cords, he drove them out of the temple with the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers money and overturned the tables. And he said to those who sold doves, Take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of merchandise. Um, and he says further, um, Then his disciples remember that it was written, Zeal for your house has eaten me up. And I wrote to the side here, Jesus' righteous anger. Um, and what my son had pointed out to me is actually verse 19. So I'll read that, 18 and 19. So the Jews answered and said to him, What sign do you show to us since you do these things? Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Well, Jesus was speaking about his body. Our bodies are our temples. And in the book of Genesis, it says that God created us in his image. Um, so Jesus was speaking here about not the physical temple, but his body. Um, and I was so happy that um, my son came home and he said, you know, Mom, do you know that Jesus was talking about his body here? And it just, it made me happy that, you know, you get that kind of like that light bulb moment or something that the Holy Spirit reveals um, to you, uh, maybe as a new believer or maybe even as a mature believer, uh, the Holy Spirit will always reveal truth through the Holy Word of God. Um, and it says here even further, but he was speaking of the temple of his body, which I don't even think that my son had, had shared that verse with me. So it, it was like he was getting it without even getting to that verse 21. But also I want to share Matthew 27, um, sorry, verses uh, 51, when this is when Jesus was crucified, when Jesus died on the cross and the veil was torn and I was telling um, my son you know about the veil having also a double meaning uh, possibly even a triple meaning because Jesus died on the cross and in the synagogue there was a veil um, that was also tor torn um, which as you know in the Old Testament the um, the rabbis or the priests would go back behind that veil to the Holy of Holies to once a year, the Day of Atonement, to sacrifice um, for basically the, the, for the priest or the rabbi, their sin and the sins of the people. So they made a sacrifice once a year, but only the priest could go behind that veil. So when Jesus died, the veil was torn. You see here in... Um, this is Matthew twenty-seven fifty-one. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth quaked, and the rocks were split, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. Kind of reminds me of, of uh, when Jesus comes again. And coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. But what... I, I shared uh, with my son was the veil being compared to Jesus's body torn as well 
as the veil in the synagogue. And um, if you see here, you can read further when it says, truly this was the Son of God. Um, there was um, an earthquake, the veil was torn, and Jesus' body, um, you know, he died on the cross for us, for our sins and our iniquities. And I was sharing that with him, and it was just amazing um, that it was all tied in together. But what was really cool about it was um, a couple days ago, I, no, it was yesterday, I watched uh, Pastor T.D. Jake's and I just happened to, t you know, turn on some recording. I, I record some of the pastor's shows um, so I could watch them. And he was speaking of this. So it just all tied in together how, you know, my son had brought this up to me. And then I was sharing with him in, in the book of Matthew and Jesus' crucifixion about the veil being torn as well. And then I turned on the TV and it confirmed everything. So I just wanted to share that with you. Um, I hope it blesses you. It, you know, there's so many amazing little treasures in the Bible, in the Holy Word of God, that the Holy Spirit, you know, amazingly um, shares and reveals. And you see here, uh, if we jump over to... Um, Matthew 27, uh, verses 63, uh, he was saying, Sir, we remember while he was still alive how the deceiver, they called him the deceiver, poor Jesus, after three days I will rise. And uh, so they're confirming that there as well. Um, so another thing that the Lord uh, revealed to me as I was reading, I think I have to go back to John. Um, he was sharing about rejoicing because he does live. He's, he's alive, you know. Um, anyway, I love you in Christ and I'm not sure I'll be able to find that scripture. I thought I had marked it down, but it was when the women, um, when Jesus appeared after his, um, resurrection to the women. Maybe I did pass it up in uh, Matthew. Pardon me. I had so many notes that I probably didn't mark that specific one. Um, but he was pointing out to be about rejoicing. And I was like, yeah, we need to rejoice <laughs> in his resurrection. We need to also, um, we are heirs. We are heirs to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And, um, you know, when he, he appeared and he said, rejoice. Oh, here it is. Thank you, Jesus. Um, the women worshiped the risen Lord. Do you remember when the women went to the tomb and they didn't find him? And it says here, and as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them saying, rejoice with exclamation point. So they came and held him by his feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. But the Holy Spirit highlighted this to me, rejoice. And we are um, heirs to the kingdom of God as Christians. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. And we are to rejoice in the resurrected life of of Jesus Christ, and we are heirs to that. We are part of a body of Christ that we are walking in that, in that resurrected life. So I hope this blesses you. I hope that, that it encourages you. And, um, I know these are very trying times, believe me, <laughs> I, I get it. And, um, I just know that we're all going through different things, you know, um, and I just wanted to encourage you and um, bless you. Whatever he puts on, upon my heart, I try to share. I try to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. Um, so God bless you. I pray for you all every single day. I appreciate you um, being a, a subscriber. And um, I just wanted you to know that I'm trying to encourage. And um, I just spoke to a sister in Christ yesterday, Rita. 
and she's just a beautiful blessing, and, and all of you are. So God bless you, and may he keep you and, and um, pour his Holy Spirit out over you and heal you and, and just um, permeate you with his love. Amen.